Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. It's time to take a look at what's trending this week in the world of wrestling right here on Takedown. Well, since facing Olympic exile back in 2012, United World Wrestling has been working to make the sport more fan friendly and more fair for the athletes. United World Wrestling has announced that ordered parterre, or forced as it's referred to here in the U.S., will no longer be a part of the Greco-Roman rule set. Well, it sounds like a welcome adjustment for American wrestlers who have traditionally excelled in the stand-up and struggled to score or defend on the mat. But as Five Point Move founder Tim Hans points out, the change doesn't mean the U.S. is suddenly at an advantage or that officiating won't factor into the final score. I think that there are two competing narratives at play. Um, if you ask the lion's share of the athletes, this is awesome news. Um, you know, I think it's not a secret that American wrestlers are better, American Greco wrestlers are better on their feet. It's, that's natural. Uh, even growing up wrestling the other style, uh, you know, you start on your feet. It's, I think it's the easiest aspect of Greco that translates over. Um, you know, wrestling developmentally in the U.S., we always had the seven basic skills. And those last few skills are back step and back arch. I, I, I can't speak for anybody. I'm 37 years old. I didn't, I didn't learn back step and back arch. Even during the spring and summer when you know, we did freestyle in Greco, we didn't go over that. Uh, and so I think there's a, you know, maybe a uh, assumed natural resistance towards that, obviously. Um, I don't think, I don't think, uh, you know, throws are, you know, when somebody hits a throw in a folk style match, whether that's at the NCAA or high school level, everybody's all excited over it, of course, but um, you don't see it enough. It's not the kind of thing that's practiced. People are doing shots, reshots. You know, we're maybe front headlocks, maybe some snaps. We're going to spin around, get two, and that's fantastic. But uh, no, it's not, a, it's not a featured part of the curriculum in America. I think everybody knows that. I mean, that's probably without dispute. However, the funny thing, to me anyway, I, I don't know, I, I'm sure you guys watched the juniors and the cadets. That's the you know, same rule set. You practiced it. They, DWW put that in at the age group level uh, a couple of years ago. And we just came off watching the juniors. Now, the juniors had a pretty good performance. The cadets, not so much. And the same people, a lot of the same people, uh, domestically, who are like, oh, this is going to be great, you know, blah, 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 blah. They were the same people who a couple weeks ago were complaining about the U.S. guys getting passive points uh, knocked against them for passivity. So it's like, well, that's going to be the same thing now at the senior level. Okay? I mean, the, the power, if not uh, more so in the official hands. It's not like this created some kind of you know, it's not like it's going to be open wrestling. You know, guys aren't going to go out there scarecrowing their arms to their side so people can get, get in on the body. That's not what's going to happen, especially at the highest reaches of the sport where defense is at such a premium. You know, you're still going to have a whole ton of, you know, horrible passive calls. I mean, that's, that's just how it is. I, I mean, maybe, maybe stateside. You know, uh, maybe stateside at the non-Olympic weight worlds uh, in November, maybe at the Open in December. You know, everything is going to lead up to, at this point, where we are in September. Uh, next month, uh, Northern Michigan's got a couple events overseas. And next month after that is obviously the non-Olympic weight worlds and then the Golden Grand Prix in Azerbaijan. Um, there's no doubt about it that for what U.S. Greco wrestlers bring to the table, this can be perceived as a positive development. You can find out what the coaches and athletes are saying about the new rules at the only website dedicated entirely to U.S. Greco. That's fivepointmove.com. All right, Canadian Olympic gold medalist Erica Weeb is coming up next. You're watching Takedown thanks to Casey's General Store.
right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. All right, welcome back. Our Takedown Radio recap continues north of the U.S. That's where Erica Weeb recently became just the third Canadian wrestler ever to win Olympic gold. She talked with us about her personal journey to the top of the 75-kilo division, the perceived bias against North American athletes, and her future aspirations in the sport. I actually um, I lost the Canadian National Championships and so in March of 2015, and so that... I, uh, I only lost to one person in 2015, and that was a Canadian. You know, our, our program is really strong, and uh, I, mean, I just didn't have what it took on that day. And so I lost the opportunity to represent Canada, the Pan Am Games, and at the World Championships in Las Vegas in 2015. But, I, you know, I feel like that failure definitely made me stronger and made me think about what I needed to focus on and what I needed to do in 2016, and uh, it all worked out. You know, women's wrestling has had a really strong legacy in in Canada, um, we won a medal at the last, uh, like, ever since women's wrestling was inaugurated in 2004. And so I think um, it just kind of the nature of the sport, the profile of the sport is changing. I think with social media, you know, people have seen me more, feel more connected to my story. I know you've got a lot of experience in the past um, against Adeline Gray. I have to imagine you you had planned to face her at some point. Did you have to change change your game plan at all when you didn't end up meeting with her in the semifinals? Well, I mean, like the draw is completely random, right? And so I had game plans for every single one of my opponents. And uh, I looked at my draw, you know, the night before weigh-ins, and I knew it was going to be a tough day. And I was, but I was taking it match by match. And so I wrestled my first opponent, and then I, you know, took care of the Chinese um, athlete Fang Lu Zhao, who's she's a really tough competitor. You know, she's a 2013 world champion. She's um, you know, got what it takes. And so I had to, to really focus on that match. And then when I looked over and I saw that um, Adeline had just lost to Marza, Marza Luke, the Belarusian, in the quarters, I immediately shifted my focus and, and knew that I had to wrestle Vasilisa. And she's a really tough opponent. And that's all I thought about on that day. But, um, you know, I just, I'm super excited. I had so much fun wrestling at the Olympics on August 18th. And, uh, there's so many opportunities ahead of me, and so I just kind of try and do what I did for the last four years and be my best every day and see where it takes me. Um, as, as American wrestling fans, we often think that um, there's a certain bias against Americans, you know, with referees, with other countries being <coughs> our closest ally. Do you get that same mm-hmm. perspective, or do you feel like we're uh, we're just being babies sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is a subjective sport. But at the end of the day, like if you're not the one who's creating opportunities, and if you're not the one scoring, the way I look at it, you don't deserve to win. I mean, it's it's really hard right right now sometimes with the passivity point, and the refs can put up a point, and 
and can really decide the match. And we saw that with the Mongolian wrestler against uh, Uzbekistan, I believe, right on the last day of wrestling at the Games. But um, I've always thought that if you can't put points on the board and, and you know, create action and, and really win on your own terms, then, you know, maybe you don't necessarily deserve to win. So I always try and keep it out of the referee's hands, and, uh, and that's kind of my MO. All right, the All-Star Classic has its first entry. We'll talk about that and more after this. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Matt. Homemade crust. Fresh meats and vegetables. 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good, too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all-new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Well, the National Wrestling Coaches Association recently announced that NCAA champ Miles Martin will be in action at the 2016 All-Star Classic. Now, as expected, Martin will move up a weight for his sophomore year and will make his 184-pound debut in Cleveland. While his opponent has not been finalized, Martin will likely take on Cornell's Gabe Dean in what could be a preview of the 2017 finals in St. Louis. With more on the All-Star Classic, here's lead organizer Aaron Grossman. Pressure's on, but it feels good. But everything is actually coming together really nicely. We've got, uh, you know, one the, one of our feature matchups is not officially confirmed, but I was told I can at least talk about it on the show if you'd like me to. Yes, I do. Make the announcement. So we're, uh, it looks like we're going to have uh, returning national champ Miles Martin from Ohio State uh, versus two-time national champion Dane Dean from Cornell. Uh, that looks like it's not officially confirmed yet, but uh, it looks like that's going to be our feature match. I, I don't know if anybody knows, but Olympic gold medalist Kyle Snyder is going to be kind of the head clinician okay. for the clinic. And uh, so super excited to have him come into town and spend spend time with our youth. Uh, he'll also be at our at our social uh, prior to uh, to the main event. And then we just found out that Kerry Kolot signed up as well, so another former Olympian, two-time national champion. Will also be uh, be assisting uh, as well. Yeah, I've just had I've had an opportunity to speak with several coaches uh, over the last couple of months, and yeah, that does happen. I mean, we there are a couple of people that uh, that I would love to see in this event that that aren't going to participate. It. Either they're not they're not ready yet, they don't want to compete with a guy who they might be facing in the national title right off the bat if they're not you know 100 percent ready to go. So it, it is it is a little bit more challenging, but at the same time, what I'm seeing. Like, for example, I just got, I saw an email a couple of days ago by Tom Brand. You know, he, he was looking for all three of his guys to potentially uh, participate in this event, so, uh, which, which uh, I was really excited to see that. But we, we do still have this year 
I think we're going to see the majority of the top guys out there uh, competing in this event. There might be just maybe four or five that, that, that won't, but the majority will. Well, the remaining 19 participants will be announced over the coming weeks, and we surely will interview them all. Look for those interviews and more on the 2016 All-Star Classic at the website you see on your screen. All right, before we go to break, here's Mark Schwab with a special announcement from Opportunities to Succeed. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. Hi, I'm Mark Schwab with Opportunities to Succeed and Mental Warriors. I'm looking for 15 athletes starting in November and going through the high school season or even the collegiate season, I'm looking for 15 true competitors who want to give themselves every opportunity to succeed, challenge areas that they've never challenged before. We're not talking about the physical training. We're talking about uh, focus. We're talking about awareness and while trying to keep things simple. But we're talking about taking your mind, your confidence, your attitude, your mental climate, your ability to concentrate to a whole nother level. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. If you follow the program and you put into it, you, you'll get out what you put into it. But if you follow the program, I won't guarantee you success, but I will guarantee you growth. I will guarantee you development. And I tell you, for a lot of you athletes who are getting ready to compete one year from now in college, I can't think of a better program or something to start getting you ready for that because there's nothing to get you ready for a college season mentally. The season's three times as long, three times as grueling. And, uh, you know, this would give you a head start, not only in wrestling, but these skills you learn go way past the takedown. These are skills that you can learn to use in any arena of your life long after wrestling's gone. Yellow Blue wants to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasons are our business, food is our passion. And we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award-winning too. Wings and Things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram 133 or on my website, teamramos.co. All right, welcome back to Takedown. Our coverage continues. We head to Fairfax, Virginia. George Mason head coach Joe Russell joins us live from the Patriots wrestling room. Joe, welcome back. How are you? Thanks, Scott. I appreciate you having me on. And without further ado, dude, you are going into the Nike hot seat. Are you ready? Oh, I'm already sweating, so I guess I'm ready. Hey, well, with 100-degree temps there in Virginia, <laughs> I'm not sure where those temps are coming from, but... 
Um, I know your director of Patriot Productions, Chef O'Meara, and uh, everybody is so excited about doing this interview today because we get to talk about some positive news. You've had some recent additions to your, uh, your coaching staff, but before we talk about the recent additions, let's talk about the uh, longtime staff that made their departure um, doing what you're supposed to do as a head coach. You help them learn, you train them, they move to other programs and, and uh, look toward being head coaches just like you. Israel Silva went where? He went to Fresno State, so he's going to help Troy Steiner get that program back and, and back on the map. So I'm uh, excited for him to take that opportunity. And it is hard to lose somebody, but it, you know if I'm doing my job right, people want them, and, and him and Troy will do a great job out at Fresno. Well, fresh start for you in your fifth year at George Mason as you've literally put that program back together and on the mat. And now you get the opportunity to do it uh, with with one of the guys who literally was the head coach before you at George Mason. Talk to us about Mark Weeder's return. Yeah, it's great having Mark back. You know, since I stepped on campus, Mark has been very supportive. He bleeds green and gold. He wrestled here as an assistant coach and then a head coach. So, his involvement with the program has continued since I got here, and now to have it more formalized as he'll be the head assistant, I feel real real fortunate to have him back here, and his commitment to the program has, has shown through in the five years I've been here. You know, and some would say it's ironic that he would return as an assistant as you're the head coach, but I think it's, it's perfect timing, actually. Uh, Mark knows the area, knows how to recruit, knows what the administration's expectations are. He seems to be on the same page as you most often. And that's one of the hardest things for uh, a new uh, assistant coach to do is to assimilate. Mark's already done that. Yeah, no, I think it'll be good. I don't think there'll be any training needed. You know, he's he already helps me with our club and has helped me with a lot of things and getting him in the office. I just feel a little awkward that I'm sitting at his old desk and He's sitting in a different one. So, you know, we'll work through those kind of things. But he's hit the ground running and, and been at work here now just for a couple of days. But I can already see that, that, you know, his impact on this program before I got here. And, you know, it'll be long down the road. He'll keep having an impact on George Mason wrestling. Yeah, I don't think Mark cares where he sits or what, it, what desk he sits at. He wants to be a part of the program. And that's real evident. You were also able to uh, add a, a strong second assistant, somebody with a, a great deal of uh, wrestling history in his family. Let's talk a little bit about Kanan Bathia. Yeah, I'm real excited to get Kanan here. I was able to coach his older brother, Josiah. When I got here, got to know the family a little bit and have been a fan of Canaan's from afar and definitely, you know, excited to get him down here. He's been competing for the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center and he's going to keep competing. And I think that'll be good for our guys to see a guy who's training to be the best in the world and, and to have him in the room as one of their coaches. I think it's going to be a big benefit to our program. So it's, it's very exciting to get him. He's a high character guy. So I feel blessed he, he wants to start his coaching career out at George Mason. Our guest today is the head coach, George Mason, home of the Mighty Patriots, and that, of course, is Joe Russell. Joe, we're going to go off book here a little bit. Um, I know you have some emotions here, as I do, uh, and perhaps it's just an opportunity for you to make a statement, uh, a greeting card, if you will, to Jay Robinson. Jay Robinson recently released after 30 years of commitment to the University of Minnesota, where you served at his side as a longtime assistant there, I know you learned a lot from him and you know of his character, his, his moral convictions. Um, were you surprised that the University of Minnesota let him go so, mm, I don't want to say quickly because I don't think it was a quick process, but it seems like he was treated, uh, he could have been treated better. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, and like you said, Jay's had a huge impact me on me from, having the belief to recruit me to go there, to teach me as a wrestler, to being his assistant coach for many, many years. And I owe a ton to Jay. And, and I know, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of the situation. I'm far away, but I do know his heart was in the right place and he's trying to do the right thing. And whether you agree with how he handled it or not, I think he saw a problem. He wanted to fix the problem. I'm pretty sure he fixed it pretty well. So, you know, just, you know, disagreements with the University of Minnesota on how it was handled. But I do know, you know, he's up front and trying to do the right thing and, you know, believes in his convic convictions. So whatever happened there, I know he can hold his head high. And he's had a huge impact on thousands of people in a positive way, including myself. And with my career as an assistant coach, 
you know, at Minnesota, he lets you kind of run everything. So when I came to George Mason, I was very well prepared because he gave me the ability to be prepared. He let me, you know, I made a lot of mistakes when I was there as a coach and that was okay with him. He wanted you to learn and grow. And, and so I think, you know, I, I owe a ton to Jay as does the wrestling community. And whether you agree with how he handled it or not, I, I really do believe that overall he was trying to do the right thing. And, and, uh, that he can hold his head high for forever. So I appreciate everything he's done for me. But yeah, it's very emotional. On behalf of all of us, Coach, we hope you enjoyed your time in the Nike hot seat today. I appreciate you sharing the news with us. We'll do the same and share it with the rest. Hope you've had a great interview, and we wish you all the best. Thanks, Scott. Go Patriots. All right, special thanks to Joe Russell, Tim Hans, the Ohio State Athletic Department, and all of our guests on the show. And finally, I want to take a minute to recognize a buddy of mine, Mike Finn of Win Magazine. Recently, Mike was recognized for his hard work and dedication to the sport when he was named the 2016 recipient of the Bob Dellinger Award. Mike is a tremendous writer, editor, journalist, and most importantly, a great person. Win publisher Brian Van Clay said it best. Mike Finn has a true love for the sport of wrestling and a tireless work ethic. Well done, Mike. Congratulations from all of us here at Takedown. For all the news, interviews, articles, and more, check us out on the web at TakedownWrestle.com and listen to Takedown Radio Live for your chance to win the new Paterio shoes from Adidas. From Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.